Hey everyone, Clint Butler here from SIA, and on behalf of the entire SIA team, thanks for watching. This is test number 71. It's part two of our bounce rate hack uh, test that we want to um, see if it helps, see if it's working. So let's get into it. All right, so if, if you're not aware of part one, essentially what we're doing is using Google Tag Manager to manipulate the bounce rate of a web page. And the idea is that somehow Google is um, monitoring your bounce rate or the bounce rate of every website on the internet. And it's using that as a user experience algorithm piece to help determine ranking. And so thus, if you have, let's say you have a high bounce rate, your page is going to 100% in Google Analytics, you think that's bad, so you're going to use Google Tag Manager and you fire off an event inside of Google Tag Manager and that lowers the bounce rate. Uh, and in order to understand why that is, there's it's a couple of things. So if your bounce rate is 100%, let's say you write this article, it's 100%, it's ranking on Google, and your bounce rate is 100%. That is meaning, that is telling you, uh, according to the way Google Analytics works by default, that the visitor went to your page and it didn't click, they didn't click anything else leading anywhere on your website. This might necessarily actually not even be a bad thing. So if you have a high bounce rate on a landing page, for example, let's say you have a, a list building or landing page, you're sending everyone to that to get them to sign up to your list in order to be forwarded to a product offer or service. Uh, and that product offer or service may not necessarily be on your same website. There you go. Your bounce rate for your landing page is going to be 100%. That's good. That's what you want. You don't want lower than that. You don't want 80s and 90s because it means that you have copyright issues, right? So, you know, they're going to your landing page and they're clicking around on your website and they're not converting. So that's why in a landing page, your high bounce rate is actually good. Lower bounce rates means bad. Um, th this argument is if you have lower bounce rates, you are going to rank better. Now, it's kind of a flawed test uh, and it's really just because we don't necessarily control how people navigate our website or go or interact with our website when we get there. Sure, we can set up um, eye catches, like the use, uses of headlines, uses of imagery and stuff. We can get them to scroll to read the next paragraph, right? Um, we can get them to do that. But at the end of the day, it's the user. And so this test is kind of come bouncing bounce rate with pingback. Uh, and and the, the difference is ping back, you go to the search results, you click on a link, it's not what you want, you click back and you go back and it's, you're, you're ping ponging is, I think is the, the term that some retard made up. <laughs> I'm not even sure, but ping ponging is, is the other one. So you go to the SERPs, go to a page and go back. And that, and that is inevitably tested in here too. Plus there's some movement on the pages and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it had zero effect on the test page here. So the bounce rate could be 100% or bounce rate could be zero. Nothing showed any improvement uh, or otherwise. So you could come to that conclusion because nothing showed that Google is not necessarily using bounce rate. They may be using ping back, uh, but that's a little bit harder to see. But for sure, you can you can come to the possible conclusion that they are using bounce rate or not using bounce rate. Um, but in this case, this is one of those tests where you call it inconclusive because you just don't know. We just can't know uh, because there's too many other variables. Again, we talked about how the user uses your page, how long they're on your page, how long they click around your page, how long do they, you know, take the read, how long, you know, do they look at all the images, all that stuff, all those things are in here and kind of muddle this test up. And so um, the test results are inconclusive, but I also think that because they are inconclusive, we could probably reasonably expect that bounce rate not really a ranking factor it is a good cro measurement though so you don't want to discount this metric um but it's not necessarily a factor all right so i hope you appreciate this one i know it's it's, it's, it's kind of a lot 
impact it into a little test here. Um, but this is what makes testing exciting. If you want to know about more about SIA, go to seointel.com. Link should be down there below in the description. If not, seointel.com. It's pretty easy. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.